I finally got the email that everyone dreams about. An agent offered to represent my novel. Yes! But five days later, I responded with an email that said, thanks, but no thanks. Was that a terrible decision? Here's what happened. And stick around after the story because I'll talk about what authors should learn from my experience. I'd submitted my novel to two types of agents. Agents I had met in person and agents I had not met in person. Every agent I hadn't met just ghosted me. Cold submissions are a tough, tough universe. Let's look at the math. An average agent might get 8,000 submissions in a calendar year. On average, a normal agent only takes on 3.5 new clients annually. That's average, right? Established agents might take on one or zero while new agents might take on six or seven. So what's the percentage of acceptances then? 0.04%. Just to put this into comparison, your chances of getting into Harvard are 3.6%. That means you're 90 times more likely to get into Harvard than to land a particular agent. On the other hand, if you submit to 90 agents, that would give you roughly the same chance as a Harvard admission. But the agents I met in person were a completely different story. As soon as I wrote in my query letter, I met you at X conference. They perked right up and asked for a full manuscript. And the agent who offered to represent me was one of those. We talked before professionally a few years back. He asked for my full manuscript and then a month later he sent a glorious email that said I want to represent you and suggested we hop on a call. The phone call is where the problem started. He said a lot of nice things about my book but they were all a little vague. He did answer my questions quite well about submission strategies and where this book fit into the marketplace. Yet after the phone call I wasn't sure whether I wanted to sign with him. I had this weird crazy suspicion that made me sound super paranoid. Had he read my book? I mean surely he wouldn't offer representation to a book he hadn't read, right? That would be crazy. I was sure I was imagining things. Still, I pulled back my sleeves and I prepared to do some heavy duty research on this dude. Research level one, the agency. His agency was very well respected. I'm talking one of the top agencies in New York. Clients have won the National Book Award. They've won the Pulitzer Prize. There were no red flags there. I would love to be represented by this agency. Two, he'd been an agent for more than a decade. Long track record with lots of clients. Also no red flags. This agent really seemed legit. And third thing I learned was he wasn't a lower tier agent. He wasn't an assistant or associate. He had a top tier title, which is another thing in his favor. Okay, so far he's passed the research with flying colors. He looks phenomenal. Now it's time for research level two, the Google search. And that's when some cracks began to show. There were three different issues I found in my research online. One, there were some complaints from authors. People who said they didn't like working with him. People who said he didn't represent their manuscript well. There were also some dodgy stories about contracts, like people who said he'd started representing them before they'd signed a contract with him. And lastly, there were some scuffles with the governing body of literary agents. And honestly, this was the most problematic information. But there was nothing recent. All of these complaints were dug up from author forums from more than a decade ago. And I thought, well, surely I can forgive a guy for making mistakes in his past. And maybe he would tell a different story than what these authors were saying. Still, if I was going to entrust my novel to this guy, I had to make sure that he was on the up and up. I've had so many writer friends tell me horror stories about breaking up with their agent, their agent ditching them, or their agent just ignoring all their phone calls and emails. I knew I wanted to get this relationship right because really, it is the most important relationship for an author. So I moved on to level three of my research. Hey, just a quick sidebar before I tell you the rest of the story. If you're about to publish your book or you recently published your book, BookFox Publicity would love to help you get the word out. Go ahead and click the link in the description for more info. Okay, research level three, Publishers Marketplace. If you're looking for an agent, you have to get a subscription to Publishers Marketplace. No ifs, ands, or buts. No, oh, maybe. No, I can't afford it. It is non-negotiable. Listen, it's $25 a month and it gives you the details on every agent and every deal in the universe. You can look up deals an agent made three years ago, seven years ago, 15 years ago. And let me give you an example of how crucial this information is. So I have a very good writing friend who recently landed a literary agent. I congratulated him on social media and then I checked out the agent on Publishers Marketplace because I thought, oh, maybe I'll submit to her. Folks, she's never sold a book. Like, Never, not a single one. And I wonder whether my friend knew that when he signed a contract with her. If he had a Publishers Marketplace subscription, he would have known. My agent looked fantastic on Publishers Marketplace. And here's what you're looking for on Publishers Marketplace. You're trying to figure out whether your agent sells mostly on the secondary market, which means they're selling international deals, audio rights, digital rights. What that means is they're not representing any new books. They're only working with books they've previously represented. You want to look for agents who are selling new fiction. And my agent was, he was representing a decent amount, probably more than other agents I'd looked at. And What's more, he'd represented two authors that I knew. A woman, because we shared a publisher, and a guy I'd met twice at an AWP conference. All right, he was checking out on Publishers Marketplace, which was a great sign. Now, it was time for research level four, email and phone calls. I reached out to both the authors I knew over email and I asked them a simple question. What was their experience with this literary agent? The woman emailed me back with a very interesting piece of information. She'd already lined up a book deal with an editor of Publishers House, and the editor said, listen, to make this deal go through, I need you to be represented by an agent. So she asked the agent that gave me an offer 
to represent her. And he went ahead and did the forms and he was great at it, she said. But that also meant that he hadn't done the difficult work of actually finding a publisher for her. The guy I knew from the AWP conference emailed me back and said, let's set up a call. Ooh, I could read the subtext. Can you read the subtext? Why do you think he wanted a phone call? He wanted a phone call so nothing he said would be in print. He was being very, very careful. And so I knew what he had to say would be really valuable to me. We talked the next day and I learned some super valuable information. This agent was known in the industry as a non-editorial agent, which means he really didn't give any editorial advice or work with your manuscript in any way. He just shipped your novel out to a whole bunch of different publishing houses. Now, my friend said that he knew that this agent would sell his novel. The question is whether I want an agent who didn't work with me on my story at all and just acted like a disinterested lawyer. Lastly, this agent had a very varied backlist and not a lot of the genre that I wrote. So my friend suggested that maybe he wasn't a good genre fit for me. At the end of the call, I asked my friend whether he thought that I should sign with this agent and he said it probably wasn't the best fit. Research level five the test. I was leaning toward turning this agent down, but that terrified me. What if this was my last chance? What if I spent the next one year or two years or three years not getting agent and I looked back and I regretted turning down this big chance? Was I making the biggest mistake of my writing career? So I decided to set up a final test. If he passed this with flying colors, then I would sign with him. But if he failed it, then I would turn him down and just deal with my regret. I asked him a simple question over email. What did you like about my book? He got back to me within a few hours with a pretty lengthy email. The email talked all about my book and all about my plot and exactly what he liked about my story. It was very detailed, it was very thorough, and it was obvious that he was trying very hard to make me sign with him. There was only one problem. The email was written by ChatGPT based on information in my query letter. My early suspicions have been right. He hadn't read my book. I wasn't crazy. So that was the final straw. I emailed him back and said, thanks, but no thanks. I didn't burn any bridges. I didn't say anything mean. I just politely declined. And he responded very politely and professionally as well. So what can writers learn from my experience? Here are five takeaways. One, trust your gut. There are a ton of scammy agents out there who are much worse than this agent. There's really a whole cottage industry that preys on vulnerable writers. So if you don't feel good about it, don't sign a contract. And if you have some doubt, post about in a writer's forum and they're going to give you fantastic advice. Two, do your research. If I hadn't done a deep dive and found out everything about this agent, I might have signed with him and it might have ruined my writing career. And do not skip research level four. I know it's the hardest one to do, but interviewing former and current clients is the best way to learn about your agent. You will learn far more than anything you can do on research on the internet. Three, don't be desperate. There will always be more agents out there. Don't feel like you have to sign with the very first one that offers you representation. Honestly, most of my writing friends are on their second or their third agent. Remember, Agents need you. Without you, they don't have anything to sell. Four, think about career. You are not looking for an agent for a single book. You are looking for an agent to represent you for your whole career. That means this relationship shouldn't be transactional. It should be relational. It needs to be a relationship where you trust their instincts and you trust their writing advice. For instance, Salman Rushdie wanted to publish his book with a publisher who offered him the most money. Makes sense, right? But his agent said, no, 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 no. This agent knew that that publisher folded very easily under pressure and this was a very controversial book. So Rushdie following into agents advice took less money to go with a different publisher, but that publisher had a much stronger backbone. And when Rushdie got the fatwa and he had to go into hiding, his publisher stood right alongside him. And he realized that his agent had helped him pick the right publisher. The other publisher turned out to be cowards. They would have dropped him in an instant. Five, meet agents in real life. Go to conferences, go to retreats, go to festivals, shake their hand, look them in the eye. If I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have gotten nearly as many fair reads. And I also wouldn't have had friends to reach out to and ask, hey, what do you know about this agent. The world does not only exist online. And when you do the hard work of creating relationships, it's going to help your writing career.